Hello. Let's take a look at subtracting mixed numbers with regrouping. All right, so we've done subtracting mixed numbers without regrouping, um, but we are going to look at situations where we end up with the fraction on the larger number is too small to subtract the fraction from the smaller number. So in this case, I'm going to do 7 and 1 8 minus 2 and 3 fourths. And again, if we're just thinking about the size of these, 1 8 is pretty small. I mean, our pieces obviously with eighths are smaller than they are with fourths. And then I only have one of them. And again, 3 fourths is almost a whole right here. We're just one piece shy of that. So if the problem were just 1 8 minus 3 fourths, I could not do that. All right, I would not have enough up here to take away 3 fourths. All right, so then, but collectively, 7 and 1 eighths is larger than 2 and 3 fourths, so I can do the subtraction overall. I do have enough here to subtract this from it, but just the fraction part is not going to work as nicely as it did in our other problems. All right, so I'm picking two examples to do in this video, but both are going to have easy denominators because I really want to focus on the regrouping part, not the denominator part. So um, in this one, I'm going to, again, do as I have done first in other videos, and that is let's look for a common denominator. All right, so with 8 and 4, hopefully you can just say, well, 8 is a multiple of 4, so our common denominator is going to be eighths. All right, and so uh, I don't have to do anything to 1 eighth. It already has the eighths as the denominator, so it's going to stay as 1 eighth. However, with 3 fourths, I do need to change it. Right, I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator by 2 in order to get a common denominator, and so I get 6 eighths here. So again, here that issue becomes even more obvious. I can see 1 eighth minus 6 eighths. I just cannot do that. All right, I don't have enough up here to take 6 eighths away. All right, now let's pause for just a second and think back to when you ran into this problem with whole numbers and you were subtracting. Let's say I had 132 minus 68. And I would go along and I would say 2 minus 8, I can't do that. I have to come over to the next place up and I have to borrow 1 from it. And again, here I'm borrowing 1 from the tens column, so now I have two tens and I'm giving that 10 to the 2 and making it a 12. All right. And now I would say, oh, I have enough to subtract. I'm going to get a 4 here. I would see the same thing's going to happen here. I can't do 2 minus 6, so I'm going to come to the hundreds place. I'm going to borrow 1. So now I'm giving 100 or 10 tens to the two tens that are there. And so I end up with 12 tens minus 6 tens is 6 tens. We do this all the time, all right? And you get this weird scenario where you end up with a, a number here that's too big, all right, for that place alone, but we allow that to temporarily slide just so we can do the subtraction. And the same thing's going to happen here. All right, so I've got this 1 eighth. All right, again, that's a spot that's even less than the ones place. All right, this is a fractional amount. All right, so I have the ones, the tens, the hundreds, and so forth. The, this fractional part means we're in a spot that's less than a whole one. So the next place up would be to go into the ones place and say, I need to borrow a one. All right, so I'm going to take one of the ones away from the seven, and I'm going to give it to the one eighth. And for right now, I'm going to write that as plus 1. So I've taken the 1 away from here, and I've added it to here. All right, so now instead of 7 and 1 eighth, I have 6 and 1 eighth plus 1. All right, I've just kind of done a little switcheroo there and given 1 to the 1 eighth. Now, we always know that we have to have common denominators when we add fractions. But you might say, well, that's not even a fraction. Let me write it so that it's more recognizable as a fraction. This would be one whole, one month. I'm just kidding, you would never say that, but you might say that if you were playing around. All right, so now I need to get a common denominator. Well, what's the common denominator with one and eight? It's gonna be eight, eight eighths. All right, so I'm gonna change this one eighth plus one into one eighth plus eight eighths, and this is gonna become nine eighths. All right, or 1 and 1 eighth is 9 eighths. Just that same thing that we did when we changed mixed numbers into improper fractions as we're doing that. All right, I'm going to, this 6 eighths has just been sitting here very pac patiently. I'm just going to bring it all the way over 
and it's 6 eighths. All right, and I'm going to remember that we're subtracting. So I'm going to do 9 eighths minus 6 eighths, and I get 3 eighths. All right, now I'm going to come over and I'm going to look at this. All right, I've got 6 minus 2 is 4. All right, they're so far apart. Um, you could keep carrying all of this the way over. In fact, I'll do that next time so you can see what that option would look like. But, um, but it's 4 and 3 eighths. And so now we have to look at this 3 eighths and say, is there any simplifying I can do here? The answer is no. 3 is a prime, and it's not a factor of 8, so that would be it. And so our answer would be 4 and 3 eighths. All right, so again, method one, where we just kind of leave this alone over here, and we just move the eights across and watch its progress and come back to this at the end. All right, here's a second problem that we could do. Five and two-fifths minus three and nine-tenths. All right, again, with adding, I said it doesn't matter which one of these you do first, if you do the fraction part first or if you do the whole number part first. I would say with subtraction, I would definitely do the fraction part first because you want to see, do I need to regroup? Am I going to need to borrow something from here um, in order to make this uh, a number that's big enough that it can subtract nine tenths from, ten, nine tenths from it? If you subtract first, then you might end up having to erase this and start over again. So I would wait for the subtraction to do it until the, the subtracting of the whole numbers to do it to the end. Adding doesn't matter, but subtracting, definitely wait until the end to do that. All right, common denominator here. Hopefully you can see that it's gonna be uh, tenths. So I, as I said, I was gonna do the part where we take the whole thing along with us. And again, this denominator is easy, so we can see that this is gonna be five and four tenths, again, that's because I need to do five times two to, to get 10, two times two to get four, all right? And then I'm gonna take minus three and nine tenths. So again, I'm gonna keep carrying this three and the five over with me as I go instead of just doing the fraction part. Okay, I go to do the subtracting the fractions part and I get four tenths minus nine tenths and right there, there's a big problem because four is too small to subtract nine away from. And so I'm gonna to need to borrow from this next column or take one away and regroup it. All right, so let me do that. I'm gonna take one away from the five ones and I'm gonna give it to the four tenths. All right, and again, just so that we're Looking at fraction plus fraction here, I'm going to write it as one whole. Right now, again, I need common denominators to add, and so I'm going to do uh, the common denominator would be ten, 10, and so I'm going to add 10 tenths. Again, you don't have to do that step right here where you write plus 1 over 1, and then a separate step plus 8 over 8. If you just want to go right from this where you're adding and say, oh, I'm always going to have to add numerator and denominator the same. You could skip this step right here and just go to this, right? Which is what I did this time, is I just wrote, instead of one over one, uh, I just wrote 10 over 10, because I know they have to be the same right here, and these have to be the same right here. Again, we're gonna keep traveling along with everything. So this is now gonna become four and 14 tenths minus three and nine tenths. All right. So now I have enough here. I have 14 compared to nine, unlike here where it was four compared to nine and I didn't have enough. Now 14 minus nine, that I can do. All right. I end up with uh, five tenths and then one right here. And then again, I need to look to see, can I simplify that? Yes, actually this is the first one in a while that we've seen where we can simplify. I get one and one half. They both have a common factor of five, whoops. So I do five divided by five is one and 10 divided by five is two. All right, let's do one more. Actually, I want, before we do that, I wanna point out one thing. Um, a very, very common mistake to make, and I'm pointing this out because I don't want you to make this mistake, is just like in subtracting here, how you cross that out and put a one here, right? Sometimes people think that I can just cross this five out, right? That is a four and put a one right here. 
All right, it happened to work in this particular case, but let's go up in this one and see what would happen here. If I take one away from the six and just give it to the one in the numerator here, I get 11 eighths. And here, I know that it's equivalent to nine eighths, all right? So if you might think, well, why didn't we do that here? It does work because that's just a lucky case. That's because the denominator was 10, all right? But in most cases, it will not work. All right, so please do not cross that out and just put a one right here because it, you know, most of the time it's not going to work. All right, let's do one more. Let's say I have six and one ninth. No, I just, oh no, I didn't do ninths. Uh, minus two and two thirds. Again, we're choosing easy denominators so we can focus on the borrowing part. All right, and again, I'm going to do this method again. The advantage to this one is that you're not carrying everything, but there's a concern that you're going to forget about that four because it's going to have been so far past in your memory. Um, so if I do this again, it does mean I'm writing more, but I'm never going to forget that I have to do that whole number part because they're always staying together. So I'm going to do that again this time. And again, I'm not going to worry so much about the denominators because they're pretty easy. The least common multiple is going to be nine because nine is a multiple of three. So this is going to stay 6 and 1 ninth minus 2, and this is going to become 6 ninths. All right, now again, I cannot take away 6 ninths from 1 ninth, so I'm going to have to borrow here and make this a 5. I'm going to add the 1 here, but again, if I use my shortcut, I know that's 9 ninths. All right, so I'm taking the one from here and I'm putting it over here as a nine ninths instead of a one. So this becomes five and 10 ninths minus two and six ninths. That's gonna give me four ninths here and that's gonna give me three. And again, I see that there is nothing in four that will go into nine also, and so this is our final answer. All right, let me give you just one other short little tip here, and that is um, if you notice that in every one of these cases, the numerator of the new fraction is always the sum of the denominator and the old numerator here. Nine plus one is 10, all right? In this case, sorry, let me, I just added that one there. 10 plus 4 is 14. Here it was uh, 8 plus 1, or let me go with the, yeah, 8 plus 1 is 9, and that's what we ended up here. That is always going to happen because, again, the numerator of the second fraction matches the denominator of the first one. Numerator of the second fraction matches the denominator of the first one. Numerator of the second fraction matches the denominator. So basically, it's like if there were... Um, if we were doing this plus this, I can just do this plus this, All right? Instead of doing this plus this to get the numerator, I can just do this plus this. Instead of doing this nine plus one to get the numerator, I can do this nine plus one to get the, uh, the new numerator. Just a little tip, sometimes people like to do that. And then that would allow you to skip this step even to just say, I know that when I uh, add nine plus one, I'm gonna get 10, all right? And so if I just skip that, that would be a third option to think about. Okay, hope that helps. Bye.